tonight. Just so you know, there is bug spray over here. If it gets a little buggy, but I think the nice breeze will take care of us. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. I'm so happy to welcome Magna, Magna Salas in with us. And because we have a dear friend of hers here, we're going to let Karen Kyer introduce her. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming. I wrote a couple of notes about Magda because she has a very long resume. First of all, thank you all for coming, and you're in for a treat tonight. Because anyone interested in the art world, and I know all of you are, its complexities are sometimes overwhelming. And Magda has written this book, which I hope you will all order on Amazon, about the trials and tribulations involved in artists' estates. Or bookshop.org if you don't like it. Amazon. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Yes, absolutely. Magda is the widow and curator of second generation abstract expressionist painter John Schuler. If any of you have heard of John, his work is gorgeous. Magda, in addition to being an art historian, is a teacher, a garden lecturer, having taught at NYU, the New School, and the Bronx Botanical Garden. And she's not new to Shelter Island. I was introduced to her, what, 15 years ago, Magda, by Priscilla Dunhill. How many of you remember Priscilla? Somebody not you would not forget. And um, they collaborated on books and many garden trips and lectures. And Magda has been with Priscilla everywhere from California to the Hudson River to France. So with great pleasure and not talking anymore, you're in for a treat to hear Magda talk about this book. Well, thank you to Karen and um, also for Terry in the library. Um, for, for inviting me, yeah, and uh, yes, indeed, remembering. Um, I'm just going to move this closer because we all want to hear you. Oh, sorry. Is that yeah. okay? Yes. Uh, yes. Better. 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 Right. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you, thank you, James. So indeed, so with Priscilla, I always wore my garden history hat, as it were, and um, so even though I've looked after an artist's estate, you know, since 1992, so for you know for a long time. And then before that, you know, because I lived with the artist, as some of you will know, there is always sort of ongoing work, ongoing helping, just as one would with, you know, with anybody else who's, who's involved and needs, needs a little bit of, of, of aid every now and again to do with sending out envelopes, putting, you know, putting things in order, <coughs> listing and all the rest of it. And, and um, so, the, so, with, so, with, with, and so I've always taught... Um, I mean, you know, when, once I had come over here to, to America um, from living in Scotland with um, John Schuler, then um, I, my, my job was always to teach. Um, I sort of stepped back from doing too much work for John because where we were living, he didn't have an assistant. In New York, he did. And so I could have, he sort of help every now and again on the weekends. Um, but otherwise, you know, he did have, he did have, um, he did have help. And so I continued with my own career in that way, which, and that was very important to me because uh, I, um, it's, it's ridiculous in a way, but, it, but, 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 but you know, I had sort of grown up thinking that I would have a career. And so when I left my superb job in um, Edinburgh, where I was the ex one of the exhibitions officers for the Scottish Arts Council, then and went up to live with John in the Highlands of Scotland, then I really stepped back from ex everything that I thought I was trained to do. Um, but, um, um, I mean, it was my choice. I wanted to. He was a wonderful person. He was very dynamic and, and uh, very persuasive, in, indeed. And so from then onwards, until his death, um, I was really, really, really with him. Um, and uh, so I did use a lot of my skills um, that I had used for the Scottish Arts Council, um, and, you know, which, was, which I've gradually applied to what you know, what what I was doing, so that so that did help. Um, so it's really only that n this year I stepped back from teaching garden history at NYU, and um, and I, I suddenly thought, why am I doing this? You know, I loved the, the subject, absolutely loved garden history, had fantastic fun um, going around. Marcelo and I, you know, also spent um, two weeks in Portugal together, as Karen said. And uh, so it was, um, you know, my garden history um, kind of life was led with people like, um, like Priscilla, and I learned a lot from from her. And my own garden book was actually based on her book, 
which needed to be updated. And I thought that we would do it together, but um, she, she still said, just go ahead, you, you do it. And so I, so I did it. I, it, was, it was based on it, but it was different as well. Um, so, I mean, I think that, that connecting that in with artists' estates, um, that is often the case, that, that, the, um, that, that the, the children um, and also the partner, whether it's a male partner or a female partner, um, that they have other things besides just hanging around, you know, doing work, you know, for the artist. Um, at the same time, you learn an enormous amount by hanging around or just by living with the person. And so I, I did feel that um, when John died, that it was, it was actually a very smooth transition. Um, and, it's, and, and in the book you'll see that um, there are so many different kinds of estates and foundations and, and artists um, you know, you know, looking after, um, looking after um, the work that of the other artist who was their partner. And, you know, it's, and so some of, these, some of these transitions are very difficult indeed very difficult and in fact it's the artists um, who were um, who were married to artists and very often the artist was quite a bit older and they were the student of this this and there was the, the love affair you know when they were students and then they were persuaded to go and live with the older artist and my um, so I wasn't taught by John but I was uh, I was much younger than him um, but the, you know, there wasn't the conflict with me because I went on teaching and, um, and I also began looking after the estate. However, the, the artists have, um, who were married to the artist who died, and these were women, um, um, always in fact women, that they found it much, much harder because um, even though they had helped, they, they suddenly had everything to do, everything to do, and all the decisions to make. And so, and I realized that, with, with, with myself, that um, but I had always been in on the decisions, but it was ultimately John's final decision. So I went with him to galleries, and um, and, and 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 of course was always standing near him at the opening, so you know, and being as supportive as possible. But um, you know, now it was up to me, um, and uh, so it it was a it it was it was a sort of smooth transition in terms of the outside world. Because um, you know, I, I was I was helping with, with galleries and that kind of thing anyway. Um, you know, but at the but, but at the same time, um, you know, I I did I did feel that it, it was beginning as the years went by to take up more and more time. And of course, it's a matter of age as well. The people who are left to look after artists' estates, um, they 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 look at it in a different way according to how old they are. Um, and um, so because I was younger. I had this extra space, in a way, to continue with my own career until, as I say, this year, I decided I'd better get on with things. I'd better complete all the work that I had begun doing, the archival work, um, and um, just uh, and and and, uh, and um, if I was going to if I was going to form a foundation which was supposed to be in my will, um, I suddenly thought, what if what if there's an, a gap of a year or a year and a half? when the legal work is being done and everything is held up. You know, I've died and the work is there, but it can't go forward. And so I decided to set up the foundation um, earlier this year and I'm still doing it. I mean, it's horrific, you know, the, the, the legal work that has to be done. You would have thought that, you know, you could just get out a template and, you know, make a few, dip, make a few changes. But um, somehow it would, um, lawyers don't seem to work in that particular way. But I'll get it done. But it also required rethinking um, the people who were going to help with this foundation. Um, so um, I, um, 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 you know, when I when I set up the foundation as part of my will, I of course you know had to uh, had to nominate and ask them whether they would serve the trustees. So I did. And, they, and so I had friends who were much more, who were my age or a bit older, and we used to have a very happy time. Once a, once a, um, once a, a year, I used to invite them for dinner, and, it was, and I called them my, the trustees in waiting. <laughs> so the trustees in waiting came for dinner, and it was so, so, so and there were quite a number of them. There were about, it must have been about seven of us or so, and they all knew, they had all known John. And um, they'd known me for, you know, for even possibly even longer than that. And so we, and, so, and then I used to give a speech 
and you know after they had their first course um, then I used to say what I had done that particular year um, what said what had worked what hadn't worked um, quite a lot of or what hadn't worked but all things that I'd hoped would go forward but you know but hadn't um, and then what I thought that I should concentrate on for the next year um, and um, um, and and then I used to put it over to them and say, you know, have you any suggestions? Have you any suggestions? How could things be done better? Um, or are there people that I should be approaching? Or what I should what should I be doing? And they were wonderful in a way. And they just sort of said, Magda, Magda, just keep on doing what you're doing. You know, it's fine. It's fine. And so of course I sort of felt, oh yes, I must be doing something. It's, it's everything okay. But in a way, it was because they they were. Very, uh, they were very fond of John. I was, we were very fond of each other. But they really weren't on the ball in terms of planning, um, of critiquing, of thinking about, of getting to know anybody in the art world that might be helpful and things like that. It was a bunch of friends, a bunch of friends. And so when I um, started to set up the foundation, um, the first thing I realised was no, some of these dear friends are no longer, you know, in a position to be able to. So, you know, to, you know, to, to help a lot with things like that, you know, because quite a lot of them were, you know, I'm 78 and uh, quite a lot of them were, you know, were, were five, seven years, eight years, eight years, you know, older than me. And so I suddenly looked and I thought, I don't want to bother these people. It's, it's you know, they've, they've helped, they've been supportive all this time and, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's enough. And so I had to re-choose re younger people who were going to be around. Um, you know, when I kick the bucket, and um, and uh, so it's not so. It's so um, they are both friends. One person works for me in London and represents the John Shuler Estate in you know over there, and the other person um, you know is a sort of art consultant, you know, sort of estates consultant herself. And so we often you know talked. In fact, I used to I used to, to I used to make a distinction between friendship and con consultation. And so we met, and we were just friends. And, and and then other times, I would say, you know, you know, can you come? Can we talk about um, the, the the about um, how things are going? And you know, can we put our heads together? And then you know, it would be from nine o'clock until twelve o'clock or whatever. And she would send the bill in. And and uh, so that was what we talked about. And I must say, I found that very very helpful. You know, because otherwise, there's a limit to how much your friends you know want to hear about the nitty gritties of you know, little things that didn't work out, but you were so sad that you put so much time into it and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it, which goes on and on. But, um, you know, but they, but um, somebody else um, who has got experience, you know, can, you know, in, can in a way see what you can get out of it if, if you can, or just drop it. Drop it. Um, and, and one of her expressions is, Magda, um, go where the energy is. Go where the energy is. And I thought, yes, you know, sometimes there are things that you go on and on, um, you know, um, and trying to get, thinking that a, a gallery might um, suddenly change its mind, that somebody, that you know, somebody else is going to do something or other, and um, and and I, I keep that in my mind. Go where the energy is. If somebody is not that interested, then don't spend too much time on it. You know, try to find you know the right person for you know for you know for the um, for for the paintings and things like that and and uh, so this is this is sort of in a way where where I am at the moment and it it's, it fills me with great great relief that I've nearly done it in terms of, of I mean now it's got to be run and um, you know once once the foundation is in place you know the bookkeeping will have to be absolutely you know sort of perfect in case the IRS come along you know and uh, it's going, I'm going to have to consult with the other, um, the other three people. Um, I can't just do anything, you know, do what I like. I'll have to confer with them and let them know what I'm doing, see whether they agree and one thing or another. And also get them involved in how I, the whole process of what I'm doing. Um, because if they're going to take over, then the more they know about it, the better. And so again, sometimes I will have them over or one by one or whatever. And, and again, as a, as a paid job, you know, for me to tell them where things are, what I've done, um, 
um, and, and just so that they're acquainted. And they'll forget, you know, half the time where the files are and this and that, but they'll know that there is somewhere, that there is this file, or there is, you know, that, that, the, that not, you know, Amanda said that not all the photographs were, were finished um, in terms of being put into albums and this and, and this and that. And uh, so, um, and, and that, that, so that has put an enormous, given me a sort of spurt of energy in a way um, to, I mean, I've got to get the office in order. I know where things are, but it's a bit scatty. We all have our own methods. And um, now if a method is going to be handed over to someone else, then it's, it's got to be pretty clear where things are, what things are, and how you find them. Otherwise, they're just going to waste an awful lot of time. And so I'm not sure if I I'm not sure if I will get there. Um, you know, will I manage to do it? Um, I mean, you know, for during COVID, I did a lot because there was nothing else happening. Since then, I seem to just deal with every day. Um, you know, well, not necessarily every day, but almost every day. Um, um, you, know, re, 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 you know, I have to respond to emails. Could you do this? Could you send that? Um, but, you know, etc. Because there are going to be two exhibitions in the fall. In, in London. So of course I want those to go forward. And of course I want to be the facilitator. Of course I want other people to, to for me to save them time uh, and to feed them with, if they want photographs, I feed them with photographs. You know, if they want little write-ups on the paintings, then, um, you know, I spend, um, you know, the whole of weekend um, writing up um, a, a little bit about five paintings, which is for an article. And the and and it's going to be it's going to be um, put out in, in a uh, you know to do with weather, and um, the and, and somebody who is a weather specialist is going to write the other part of the of the write up in, in terms of what um, they see in the John's painting, which has maybe has something to do with reading the sky, um, and um, you know so it's not it's not sort of literal, but um, so you know so and when am I going to have time to do all this? This throwing out of, of my own stuff and all the rest of it, um, and I was I was very interested by um, um, Don's um, uh, little write-up because, and I sort of thought that I would use it to a certain extent. At the end, she says um, that um, um, uh, where is it now? Is it, uh, she she says um, oh that I'm, that um, yes, she says oh yes that I'm in the John Schuler Foundation. And uh, then he says, this will be a fascinating, what well, I hope, um, fascinating look into the conflicts, goals, and frustrations involved in managing an artist's estate, um, all of which I would call a labor of love. So I thought, good, you know, conflicts, goals, frustration, but then in the end, a labor of love. Um, which it isn't always, because um, in fact, um, 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 where's Gwen? Um, yeah. uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yes, that's right, mm -hmm. that um, um, we were just talking about the Liechtenstein fu um, you know, Foundation and, and, and Trust, which um, your uh, sister, sister um, works for. Yeah. And I interviewed um, jo Jack Coward in the Liechtenstein, you know, for, for the book um, about the whole thing about what he's doing for the Liechtenstein Foundation. And it's quite, it was quite overpowering to me. I mean, that was that was quite some time ago, and I was sort of, you know, just getting myself into the, you know, into the system. And um, you know, there, Jack Coward was. Um, he was absolutely professional. None of this thing about a widow, a widow taking over. You know, whether you whether you're skilled or not. You know, it is most a lot of the time the widow. But you know, but um, Dorothy uh, Dorothy Lichtenstein can hire Jack Coward. Who you worked for the Corcoran, worked for the National Gallery, um, put together exhibitions in all of Lichtenstein's work, which is why Dorothy chose him. One thing or another, and um, you know he could be paid, a, you know, a very very good salary, you know, by you know by the foundation, by the trust kind of thing. And um, he was wonderful. He was, he was absolutely delightful, um, you know. But at the same time, he he talked about things like um, a five-year plans and ten-year plans. And I sat there, you know, thinking, I'm not, you know, don't get distracted by this, you know, I'm, I'm taping it. But a five-year plan, did I have a five-year plan, <laughs> let alone a ten-year plan? But, you know, that's what, you know, in a way, that kind of training um, is different from, from, from my training. I mean, I was an academic, you know, I've taught, um, you know, so I knew some deadlines and that kind of thing, and, and 
to all the rest of it, but not but, but not not thinking quite in the same way, and also dealing with committees, you know, and all the rest of it. So there were about probably ten people working for the Lichtenstein um, 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 uh, setup when I went to, and not not all of them were full time. And one person was was totally involved with organising the rights, you know, getting all the money back from uh, from from uh, um, the the from the publishers who or even scholars, you know, who were who were writing on Lichtenstein or all writing about anything and wanted one Lichtenstein, you know, digital, etc. So um, they were very generous, and I mean, he said that they that if they really were scholars and they and and the publishers were expecting them to, you know, the, the writer to pay for the digitals, then they, he tended to give them, you know, just, just to give them the digital, you know, but at the same time, you know, for publishers, they make an enormous amount of money from, you know, from, from rights. Um, and I thought, well, what about me? What about my rights to do with John Schuler? Well, there aren't that many, you know, um, uh, um, demands or, or requests for that kind of thing. But also, I do try to get like 200, uh, if it's a cover of a, it was a cover of a book a couple of times, and, you know, and uh, so I did ask for that. But then sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a poet who, um, um, you know, who's 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 got a slim uh, volume of poetry. She's absolutely thrilled, you know, to, to get the to get the um, the poetry out. Um, that she's not being paid um, for the cover, if so that she would have to, um, you know, she would have to pay me. So again, I sort of say no. Um, that's fine. You can you can have it. Um, you know, kind of thing. So I I I, I mean, in terms of income, um, rights um, is, is 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 zero, really, and truly. It's just every night, it's just very occasionally. So these big foundations are run in a completely different way um, from the way I run the Shula, um, the, you know, the Shula estate, and and um, probably the you know the other thing. And uh, so, but at the same time. You know, one can get lots of ideas from them, and they do things very often in the right way. Um, and, you know, that they they, um, they 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 have the opportunity to, to meet people who might be writers and scholars. They have the they have the opportunity to have graduate students who are maybe doing a thesis. Who you know they can give them accommodation. Um, they can give them help. They can give them time, and they can even suggest areas within Lichtenstein's um, career. And his paintings that this that they that the graduate might work on and things like that. So um, um, in, you know, so so it's terrific, but it isn't the real way the norm. Um, those very big ones, and so you have, um, of course, the Frankenthaler um, Foundation, the Reichenberg Foundation, the Joan Mitchell Foundation, you know, the Lichtenstein, you know, etc. But they're out of about I think there are about four hundred and forty foundations, artists foundations in America. And um, so they really are a handful, you know, the ones that have an enormous amount of money. And um, also that means that they can give out a lot of money. They have to give out, because they're a 501c3, because they're not, they haven't been taxed, um, 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 you know, on the, the, you know, the worth of all the Lichtensteins, then they have to give out, you know, 5%, you know, per, per year of the total assets. And, and some of these foundations, of course, do do most splendid work, and they all choose different kinds of things that they that they, they want to so they want to support. But you can do it also, you know, if you set up a foundation, then I will have to do that too. And so I had to also decide in terms of of, of the the legal work as to what things would be would come under that, what one wanted, um, what kinds of charities that you wanted to that you wanted to support. Um, and um, so, so there's a lot of there's a, as a, as a, within a will in a way. This is the same as sort of making a will, but setting it up, and so the whole thing you know continues onwards. You know, there is a lot of sort of thinking you know to you know to do. But uh, what I feel like feel is that that um, when it's done, I will I will just hope for the smooth transition. However, you know, if we're talking about you know sort of you know frustrations and. And, and, and difficulties. Um, there are, of course, many, and um, the some and, and a lot of the frustrations with the bigger estates. You know, can you can deal with them through money? Money makes an enormous amount of difference, um, and you can get you know, and you can get the you know you can get the skills that you don't have yourself, 
or you know, like I mean, Dorothy had a, has a very uh, Lichtenstein has a very busy life, or she used to. And when I was interviewed, you know, she she was very cultured. She loved going to the and the, the de um, dance um, and, and all sorts of, of theatre and things like that. She also liked travelling a great deal, and so she really didn't want to be bothered every day, you know, to do with looking after the, the, the uh, looking after the foundation. I work in the office every single day, even on weekends very often, but not this weekend. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, um, in, you know, but but um, but um, why? You know, of course she can do that, um, and that's wonderful. And I do begrudge her, you know, her free time and, and uh, being able to, you know, and she's very involved, I'm quite sure, but, but, but you know, not in a day-to-day -day day. She just doesn't want to be, and why should she? Um, and uh, there's a lot of other stuff. So Jack Coward and, and your sister and the other, the other um, you know, and the other people who work there, and I'm sure they enjoy working there very much, you know, help, you know, with, with sort of all of that. Um, so, I mean, I was just, I was sort of thinking, frustrations, okay, um, and, you know, Don Reagan, um, lack of, lack of money can be one, lack of time, you know, can be another one, um, just, um, and then also, you can also feel resentment, um, I, I didn't, but I, but I, when I was, when I was interviewing, um, um, you know, many of the people who had had to take up, um, the mantle, as it were, um, they were annoyed that the artist had not really done his or her work, um, and um, and this was difficult if it was if it was somebody who came in from the outside, and, and by that I mean daughters or sons. They often come in. They left maybe they left the home when they were 20, 21, 22, 23. They lived in California. They came back for daddy's opening or mummy's opening or whatever. Um, but they didn't know really what was going on. They weren't around, or they might have nipped up a bit in the summer or something like that. And um, so they didn't really know, you know, uh, you know, exactly how much archival work and what was being done. And so, uh, you know, I mean, you, they, 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 some, they, they, and they say, you know, that, uh, you know, that, um, um, and, and if it was, if, if, the, if you are, are an artist yourself, and it's and you're and now you're left to look after the other artist of your of your partnership, then you do know what the man did, or and it usually is the man, and, and what and what they didn't. But you but you didn't sort of manage to persuade them um, to to get things done, and maybe you didn't. You haven't even done you, the own, your own work of doing it. And so um, I mean, you've absolutely got to have, and you I mean, all of you who are artists know that in terms of an inventory. Um, and it's also it also feels you know extremely uh, uh, satisfying in a way to know what another artist has done. You've got it from the very beginning to the very end. There'll be gaps, um, you know. But um, I mean, what you obviously want, you know, is you know, what you want. You, you want the the the, um, the painting, the sculpture, or whatever to be photographed. You want the photograph, to, you know, to, obviously, you know, to have a number or a title or whatever, and, and, and if your inventory, which is as a printout, you know, you, you, want, um, you want all of that. You want the title, you want the date, you want to know where it was painted. I do, anyway. Um, you, and, and, uh, and, it, and it's wonderful if you could have the date of when it's painted. It's not essential, but, when, as, but the more archival work you do, the more you realize that, that <laughs> yes, um, you know, um, wh why is this painting a little bit different? What you know, or a series of paintings. What, 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 and what? What was it that brought about this? And in the old days, I mean, artists used to go out of New York because there was no air conditioning, and they would go to Martha's Vineyard. They would come to Shelter Island or or Provincetown or whatever, and they they could they they can't they're not taking their whole studio with them, and so often experimental work was done during the summer because they were working on paper. Or they decided to oh, do, do some pastels, to do some crayons, you know, to do some graph, you know, to to use, um, you know, their children as models, or or something like that. Something changed, you know, during the summer. So if you have the if you have that it was done, you know, of June, July, August, or whatever of a certain year, then you've got it. And that that you know, when you're trying to make sense of the development of a of an artist's work, then that's really you know that's really very very helpful. Um, sort of indeed, and, and and in any case, I mean the you know even if you're a widow, you still have to have an inventory to give to the IRS, 
And so you've got so it's got to be done. It's got to be done, and it should be done, you know, um, as soon as possible and with as much joy as possible. It is quite tedious. So it is a fr so it's a frustration if you're left and the person is not there. And so I mean, I I my frustration was that that um, um, I mean I lived with John until the very end. But the 50s and 60s paintings were all in storage in West Haven. So, and we lived in, in New York because there wasn't room to bring them back to where John, to John's studio. And he always wanted to bring them back. And they'd been there since about 1971, I think. And um, this was 1992. When they came back after he died, there were a lot of works on paper. And they weren't, and they were, some were signed and, and dated because they had been shown. Others were not. And so, I mean, I, I spent weeks, it was fascinating, you know, but going through them, looking at the paper, looking at what, they, what, what he was using in terms of, of, of crayons and, and you know, things like that, and trying to, trying to put a date on everything that wasn't dated. So it had to be circa something or other, you know, unless, I could, unless it was so close to another, another one. So I mean that was that was that that was months of sorting things out, and uh, very exciting for me because of course I had never seen any any of this. But if I had known if I had known that there was so much work on paper that hadn't been sorted out, John had put them all in, you know, wrapped them all up. I mean they were all wrapped up and things like that. But they just I mean sitting there, you know, for, for 22 years kind of thing. Um, and uh, so you know, so it is. It's so important for that had the input, you know, of the, the artist himself, you know, or, um, or herself. And, because, and just because it takes so long to do it, um, you know, without the person. And also, you know, gallery dealers want to know what the date is. They also, they also like to see it signed as well. And um, so, that, so that's important. It's actually, it's, it's, its value goes up if it's signed. Um, so, you know, for all these very, very practical you know, practical person things. You, you know, you sort of want you want that, you know, to you know to do that. Um, but then there are also, in the longer term, um, ongoing frustrations. In that, I find that I'm because I've helped and been with John, you know, since 19, 1971, That I am redoing um, jobs which I've already done. Like for instance, I had everything, everything um, photographed. But I had, how did I have a photograph? Slides. That was that was my technology. Um, before that, John had only a few black and white prints. So we've gone from black and white prints and and very few and the catalogues, hardly any illustrations. Anyway, sort of fifties and sixties, you know, um, um, uh, catalogues, and usually not that good in terms of color or whatever. And also, I mean, do you remember how it was the it was always. Um, you, you were always going over. How many photographs can you have? You know, the color was so much more was so much more expensive. So you would say, "Oh, couldn't we have two color ones?" Or, no, one is enough. But you can have sort of three black and white. So you know, so that was that was the technology. Then you go on to you know, onto slides. So that's good. And then and then you go on to transparencies. Very expensive. Very expensive. You send them out. And then you have to get them back again. You know, um, you know, because you want, you know, two done or three done or whatever. So of course that's gone by the board. Um, and so now, so now, then I had to go. Then I have to have have everything rephotographed digitally. And of course the the quality of what you're doing goes up, you know, and up and up and up with the with the, the technology. So that's something. It doesn't go backwards. But you know, there are all these kinds of jobs. That you that you, you you know that you are redoing, and so if possible, you want to be as up and up to date as possible. You know, uh, um, you know before you 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 stop you you you've stopped um, doing this this job, and it's the same with films. That you have to be very careful that you transfer everything because I mean in New York you can find you know special places where um, you know John had some tapes. They were fabulous, absolutely fabulous of him playing jazz. In 1950, and they were all reel-to-reel, -reel, you know, um, um, sort of, you know, tapes. And when I took them to the lab, they saw sort of said that you've got to sign a, um, a, dis a, a um, you've got to sign that if they break um, because they're so old, that um, that 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 this that you're not going to you're not, you're not going to, you know, to to go against us or charge you or, or, or something like that. 
And so, I mean, I was crossing my fingers, holding my breath, you know, to, you know, to find out whether they had managed to do it. So you have to transfer your, your transfer tapes um, from or cassettes. Who uses cassettes nowadays? Hardly anybody. You know, we get left behind quick, you know, more and more quickly with technology. And so now, now, and so then my last thing was getting everything, um, getting films. You know, I, John, the first film that was made on John, was a, well, he carried it around in a canister about this big, a tin canister. And you and again you had to have you know the special the whole cinema thing and, and it went on to another another reel and all the rest of it and so you know as we know I mean now it's digital digital uh, and uh, flash drives you know or or whatever and so again so so again it, you know and, and do people want to do that well somehow or other if you get into it you feel that it is worthwhile it is you know that that it's not just a labor of love that it, it is. Um, practical and um, you it means you've got all this material ready and to have material ready to go out is one of the most important important things uh, if you because nowadays also as you know everybody wants something immediately immediately just send me the digitals you know can you know da 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 you know etc um, and uh, you know so we have to work faster and we have to have things ready and we have to have thought sort of in advance and so it's a challenge and 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 it's and it's and it's and it is and it's fascinating, you know. But it is a it is a challenge. I think there are other frustrations in terms of sometimes your own lack of skills, and you know people berate themselves for not um, you know for not being able to type very well or not you know knowing the programs. If I make a pro, what's that? You know, I couldn't use that. Excel, Excel. You can't even see anything, you know, on the, on the screen. It disappears. <laughs> and, you know, do you want, you know, so, and I, I mean, I just feel that, that, and again, money does sell, um, ser, you know, serves its purpose here too, that there are certain things that I'm not going to be good at. I can type, I can type quite, quite fast, but I can't type numbers, you know, because I have to look at where, at seven and look at this. So, um, I mean, I, if possible, I get somebody else, you know, to do um, fast typing, because I'm never going to be fast enough. Know, for, for, for my own purposes and things like that. And there's also frustration about some things that, you, that you're that you not simply good at. Like for instance, you know, some people say, I can't approach galleries. I just can't, I just can't. You know? And they take rejections um, to heart. And um, there are all sorts, I mean, I'm sure we all know um, um, artists who, um, who before they die, hadn't actually shown for 20 years or something. And uh, it's very often because there's been a rejection um, that or sometimes it's simply that the gallery gave up, the person retired. And I think that galleries, unfortunately, uh, are not good at placing their, their artists. And then I think it's only responsible when they retire to try to place all, you know, their particular artists in another gallery. And I've tried to get that. There was a gallery dealer in Chicago and she said she was retiring. And so, you know, after, uh, you know, so I, I, I sort of thought, gosh, yes, and suddenly I don't have, a, I won't have a, a, a gallery in Chicago. What, you know, what, who else? Is there another gallery? I didn't know Chicago, so I rang her up and I sort of said, you know, well, you know, shall we think about it? You know, is there another gallery that you think, um, you know, would, would, you know, would appreciate um, John Schuler's work, you know, and, and do what you've done? But she just simply said, oh, no, 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 there's no other gallery. That you know that would be that would be good at handling John Schuler's work, <laughs> and you know they have their pride too. They don't want to, and they she just didn't want to help in terms of uh, you know of, of, of interest. All I wanted her to do was to write a note or ring up another gallery and say I'm retiring. You know, and I, mean, I wasn't you know so it was nothing against her. I'm you know she was she was retiring. Would you be interested in taking on John Schuler's work? But she wouldn't do it, and I thought that was very odd. But you know, what, what can you do? So there's that, and but then, then, and then, but then there all, there's also, you know, the feeling that, um, um, you know, not from that episode, but also just the feeling of a of a of a rejection if you do go to a gallery and um, they say no, I and mean, sometimes they say the most terrible things like, oh, I've got an artist like that already. I don't need a second person. And you think, my artist, the same as another artist.
<laughs> my artists who is so individual, you know, who is so unique, and they and, and they dare to say that, and, and you know, you know, and, and, and you know, many times they are more sensitive, but basically, you know, sometimes you put a lot of effort, and you've had to gear yourself up to make that telephone call, gear yourself up to go into the gallery, you know, to remind them or or whatever, and what helped me was that um, my um, a couple of my, my assistants over the years have often come from Juilliard, funnily enough. And so they, they, they're trained in film, um, which can be very useful for me, but they're also obviously trained to be actors, you know, in film, you know, or, um, or in plays or musicals or this or that or whatever. Um, but somehow or other I started with one from Juilliard and he was extremely good. And then when he was going away for a bit, he got a, 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 an old friend of his from Juilliard too. Um, so in that way, so they they love they I think they love working for me because they can they can the day before they say oh Magda Magda I've got I've got an audition tomorrow um, and they, so I'll be in for two hours I'll slip out and then I'll be back again and so I say fine it doesn't matter to me you know I mean unless you know unless it's a day when I'm actually showing paintings or something like that and so um, um, so they do that. And so they walk up to that moment, they go out, and very often they're back within an hour or an hour and a half. And this goes on. And so sometimes I tentatively say, and they're going for, they're going for commercials as well, because one commercial will carry them over, usually for a whole year. You know. And so they're very keen about commercials. And, um, and, and, uh, and so, so, so sometimes I'll say, oh, what happened about that commercial? You know, did you get that? that you know, did, you, did you get it? Or something like that. And um, they just say no, and I and and, and then also, and, or or if it's in a play or things like. That. And I said I said to 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 Max, I said, how do you take it? You know, that you go, you're going for quite a lot of these auditions, and um, so far, you know, he hadn't got a, a, one single commercial, um, but he but he was going, he was still hoping for the you know for the plays and things like that. And he just said that um, if you're going to be an actor. You've got to be able. You've got to be tough, and you've got to just shrug it off. Shrug it off. You went to this commercial. They didn't call you back. You didn't get it. That's it. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. I mean, unless you think that you can learn from it, um, in terms of of how you presented yourself. But but um, you know, sometimes it's just a, you know you've got the wrong height. You've got the wrong look. You've got the wrong voice. You've got the wrong something or other or whatever. You know, well, it, it, to a certain extent, there's something in something, something that's equivalent in the, you know, the art world. You know, galleries are always looking for, um, you know, for for a certain type of art usually. You know, and so you know, and, with, and, and you don't know what it is because with a stable of artists, they want diversity. You know, but at the same time, they don't want you know too many extremes, etc. But I think that I learned from Max is don't is 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 just don't harbour. Um, grudges against against a gallery, you know, because they promised something and they didn't come through, um, or whatever. Toughen up, toughen up, shrug your shoulders, go on with it. Um, and I think that was, and so I, so that was that was that was good good for me. And I mean, you know, we all go through life. There, are, nothing is is always going to, or not, or not, or rather, everything is not always going to work out. And um, so we must we, we, we must we must not be too fragile, you know, in in, in, in that in that way. Um, and so, but but it is a it is a, a kind of frust frustration um, to extent. And sometimes the, the sometimes the, the, the work is also very boring. But it, it isn't to me because I want the net result. I want the end result. You know. So I so I, I sent out a flyer, you know, to do with the John Shuler News. And um, to my consternation, and, it's, and, it's, and I never learn in a way, that um, about um, at least 100 emails um, came back saying that people had gone away, they no longer worked at this museum, um, or that it just bounced. And this was, I mean, this was not, and then there, there are all sorts of people who write in and say, and say oh, this is, that's how interesting, I'm so glad that, you know, John's having an exhibition in London or something like that, I must tell my friend, or I wish I could go. You know, so, so those ones are nice. They're wonderful emails. But if you can imagine, you know, um, going through 100 emails and um, deciding whether it's important to find out where this curator has now gone. Um, um, you know, and they say, you know, getting if you if you need 
emergency help, get in touch with this person. You don't know whether that's the assistant um, or whether it's a curator or whatever. So you have to be hours at the computer working out, you know, whether you should, you know, you, you, you wipe out somebody from that from there, but should you put somebody else in? Also to do with, with, um, with, with owners, um, that if they disappear, um, then we spend a lot of time trying to find owners and, and, um, and what I call sleuthing. And so if you want, if you want a, an eventual catalogue raisonné, then you've got to know where the paintings are. And in any case, in terms of technology, you'll, you'll also find that, that you know, all those paintings that were sold in the 70s, that I've got digitals of them, but only digitals of the 35 millimeter slides. No good, no good. You know, technology has, 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 has advanced to such an extent that you, you really, you, you can, you, if you have to, you can use them, but you don't want, you want, you want much, you want to aim at much better. So you want to be able to, to know where everything is, if possible, and who it's been inherited by, what the people have done with it, you know, etc., and where they have gone. And this takes, a, this, this does take, you know, a very long time. So, um, in any case, I mean, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the goals, I mean, I always ask people in the book, then, um, what were the goals of the, of the artist whose work you're looking after? Did they say what they wanted? What were their, what were their ideas about museums? What were their ideas, you know, about, um, um, for instance, you know, making duplicates of, um, you know, of um, sculpture? So, for instance, the David Smith estate, that David Smith only wanted one off of his sculpture. And so Peter Stevens, who looked after the estate, who was the son-in-law, that um, he, um, he went by what David Smith had said that he wanted. But, you know, so they could have made, I mean, David Smith, every museum wants a David Smith sculpture. They could have made a, a much, much more money um, if um, they had been able to do, say, you know, six, um, six, six, um, six in an edition of, of the, of, of the, the well-known um, pieces of sculpture. You know, and, 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 and things, like, things like that. Um, so the um, so you're 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 trying to be sensitive to the goals of the artist whose work you're you're look you're looking at you're looking after. Um, but at the, but at, you know but at the same time things have to go things have to go forward. Think times have changed. Um, and uh, so today um, at, um, that. Um, and Greta and I were at lunch with, with friends who also are very interested in artists' estates, and he was talking about the Judd Foundation and, and the and the Ginati Foundation, and was saying that there there's a there's a complication um, because the the people who knew, who know uh, or knew Donald Judd um, knew what his ideas were about his work and how they want he wanted them displayed, and he didn't want him, and uh, and the and the new people. Say this is ridiculous. There's, there, there's no air conditioning in some of these great big sheds in Texas, in in Martha. Things are disintegrating. Um, there's, there's far too much of a of a temperature change, you know, between the very hot and the, and the things that are. We can't have that. Um, you know. So yes, the artist may have thought that that um, it was okay for his time, but it isn't now. So who do you go by? And so, this, so, so the, the goals are not always straightforward. And there are some goals which are that you want name recognition, name recognition um, for the artists that you whose work you're, you're, you're looking, looking after. Everything's so much more helpful and, and, and uh, easier if people say, oh yes, you know, and then they say, they say the name of the artist back to you. And, um, but how do you get that? And so, you know, the goals and, the, and and the and I think that that I was talking to you know to a friend the other day, and she said, yes, well, Magda, you know, it's really flexibility, isn't it? You don't have you can't have absolute goals. It's like the five-year plan. You know that there's got to be a certain flexibility that you that you may have to change your goals. You have to make rethink them, um, and 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 you also may realise that you're not actually going to 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 achieve your goals. And um, and so, um, do you give up on that, um, or um, you know, and, and just say yeah, I've tried, or that it's not possible? Somebody else will have to have to do it. 
or just feel that there would, that that you had overreached yourself in terms of the goals and it wouldn't have come about sort of anyway so there is, there's a lot of 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 of, of, of uh, sort of you know challenges um, and deciding in a way with sensitivity to the artist what you think you should be doing and how you think you should be doing it um, and, and 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 some of the you know so Mrs. Um, uh, you know Mrs. Fairfield Porter um, and uh, you know so said that that John Fairfield Porter you know didn't want his his paintings to go um, you know to, to go into hotels into into embassies into you know in, into it's all places um, where he felt that people um, were, were were not really appreciating the paintings. Well, an artist can say that. Of course, artists want their paintings always to be hung in places that are appreciated. So sometimes, you know, they can be. You know, maybe they can they 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 can be they can want too much for their work. And so again, you have to be kind of um, you know sort of realistic about you know what you um, uh, you know you know what you what you do and think about. And so um, oh. I want to have time for some questions. Yes, indeed. And it's getting dark. Yeah, yeah. We're always yes. forget at the end of our August yeah. it starts to get dark early. So um, if I can interrupt of you, course. so I'm sure everybody yes. has some questions. Um, anybody have, have anything you want to ask? I actually have something too. Sure. Yes. Yes, Janet. Yes. It's about slides. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some of us have thousands of slides and have not been able to get to some of the reproduction Yes. Can we just toss them? Well, what I'm doing is I've got two or thousands of slides. I look at them and I and I just think of all the hours of work that was spent, you know, um, putting the titles, the net, the, the titles, the dates, the this, the that. But what I've done is that I'm making up with the help of an assistant um, of three sets of three sets of slides, and um, um, just in case, just in case what. You know, just in case you lose all the digitals, something happens. But uh, but um, I I but and then I'm going to throw away the thousands of others because in the end I was getting eight slides done of every single painting so that I could be able to send them out, you know, easily and quickly. So I mean, I would definitely definitely keep a master set and um, if not a second master set, um, um, you know, of everything. Um, and that's and then th that's what we're doing. That's what so laboriously we're going through, um, you know, do it, doing that. And then you've got the problem that there are some there are some which um, I I haven't got slides of, but I've only got digitals. Um, and so then, do you get slides made? made? Well, as I, we've found a place in in Florida which actually makes slides from digitals, and and uh, expensive, expensive. And so I haven't decided whether to do it or not. But certainly, keep whatever you have is one set or two sets or three sets, and then I think look the other way, and that I, what, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to throw them all away. <laughs> this is not that much a question, but just um, I'm an artist, and I know um, I learned something along the way in terms of trying to document like, what happens to your work when yeah. you sell it. Yes. I wanted to keep track of it. Where does it go? And artists have a legal right. I mean, supposed to get a document at the year end from every gallery that shows the sales, how much, who it went to. Um, and I asked that of mm -hmm. galleries who were selling my work. Yes. And it was like, we don't want to give you that. And no, the other artists weren't asking for it. Mm -hmm. And I just think the artists should know that's what you're right. Yes, um, you're quite right. Yes. Yeah, they think you're going to then take that client. Yeah. But you actually have a right to know exactly what it sells for, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how else you're going to keep track of where your work goes if you don't know who bought it. So, yes, any artists in the crowd? <laughs> yes, I quite agree. I've always made it a condition, yeah. as did John, yeah. that um, you also have to you also have to be told who bought the painting, bought yeah. and they and galleries don't like doing that. Yeah. And then there's a difficulty in Britain because they've now brought in new privacy laws. And um, they don't have to, and um, in fact, they're not allowed to unless they, uh, you know, unless they get the permission from the person. So, so, so it's getting more and more difficult. But yes, you, you, you do, you do, you do have the right um, to, and they, you should be, you should have a formal piece of paper for every painting or everything that's sold. 
um, 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 and, and, and it should come with the check, you know, as part of it. You know, and, and then some, some of the galleries, not all, also do an annual, um, um, uh, you know, an, an annual um, uh, um, gathering of, of everything that they've sold, if it's more than one. They're supposed to, but about one percent is yeah. going to do it. Yes, you're right. But, but if, if possible, you know, if, it's, if we should all get the galleries yeah. to do that. You're quite right. Maybe I'll ask my final question and then we'll, we'll send you off into the dark. Sorry. Um, you wear so many hats. You're an archivist, you're a PR person, you're an administrator. I can't even name all the things we talked about tonight. Of all of those, what is your favorite? Do you have something that you really enjoy doing more than other of your tasks? I think I love initiating. Um, you know, that yes, I'll do all the dreary jobs too, but. Uh, um, but um, um, I, I had some film from uh, 1999 um, of two interviews, and I worked with my former uh, my former assistant on making two little four-minute films, and that was his idea. Um, and um, you know, because he's younger than me, and oh yes, you know, people don't watch. You know, if you send them half something, it's half an hour. Um, too much time. Can't so, I mean, he said what we should do is, is two little four minutes films, you know, out of the 20 minutes or whatever that there was. And I, 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 I enjoy doing all, I enjoy doing that kind of new work, really, um, um, and, and, you know, out of it all. But I'm very happy to, I mean, as you say, you put it beautifully, because I mean, some people say, oh, Magda, you're so devoted, you know, to your, your late husband. You know, you know, it, and it's sort of almost as though it's sort of, you know, as though you, you're, you're a poor little thing which is sort of left to do all this work. I'm not a poor little thing. I love doing it. And yes, it, there are dreary parts, but it's very, very satisfying. Um, and it does, things don't always work out, but basically, I believe in the work. I want to get the work out. And um, I enjoy having, you know, you know, in a way, having my own life and living it in my own way. And deciding, you know, what, how I'm going to spend my time, and what I should be doing. Are any copies of your book available for sale, purchase tonight? Oh no, I didn't bring any actually, but they, but there, there are there are, there, are, there are flyers um, on it. In fact, I brought the, the. I mean, that was another thing that that you know I edited John's writings, and um, it's very frightening doing something like that. But I am so pleased that I did it with a friend, that because he wrote so well. So that book. Is, um, is that book, the sound of the sound of sleep, a painter's life? I've um, read it. It's terrific. Oh, thank you, it's Karen. Great, yeah. great yes, it's great. Yes, it is extraordinary. It's, I'm trying to get. At the moment, I've had 16 rejections from publishers mm -hmm. to republish it. So I said that I would get 17 right. before I sort of stop. <laughs> so, but now, now the more rejections I get, then the more I, I, I sort of, I, I really want to get it published. So, <laughs> but in people any, can get any of those books on Amazon, Magda? Yes, and also, and also, <laughs> bookshop.org. Thank and, you. And then the proceeds go to a local pro, um, bookstore and not to the conglomerate. Yes. To keep yes. our local bookstores open. Good. Yes, I think that's, 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 that's excellent. So there are these. Uh, uh, so do, do feel free to open. Mm -hmm.